My name is Natalia, and I'm part of the Molecular Biosciences and Bioengineering Department. In 2012, 12-year-old Rory fell and cut himself in gym class. Four days later, he was dead. Similarly, the day before Christmas last year, 21-year-old Kyler felt like he was coming down with the flu. Within 24 hours, he also died. A staggering 300,000 people die from sepsis each year. That's more than from prostate cancer, breast cancer, and AIDS combined. With an up to 70% mortality rate, sepsis is the leading cause of death in U.S. hospitals. But what is sepsis? Sepsis is a bacterial infection that has entered the bloodstream. It, well, actually, it, uh, the body's extreme reaction to a bacterial infection that has entered the bloodstream. Our blood vessels are lined by specific cells that act as gatekeepers for the movement of fluids and nutrients from the bloodstream into our underlying tissue. In sepsis, these cells dysfunction, leading to vascular leakage, tissue swelling, multiple organ failure, and eventually death. There have been many attempts to target vascular leakage in developing sepsis therapies. However, each one of them have failed in clinical trials. And there are two main reasons for this. One, we still don't know how vascular leakage is controlled. And two, most of the experiments that have been done trying to identify compounds that might block vascular leakage have been missing one crucial factor, the presence of blood flow. You see, the inner lining of our blood vessels is constantly exposed to blood flow. And it's actually been shown that this flow itself influences how these cells behave. So my work combines both of these two aspects, and my project focuses on determining how vascular leakage is controlled in the presence of blood flow. In the lab, I grow small artificial blood vessels on little microchips that are able to detect vascular leakage in real time. I then treat these vessels with blood samples from patients that actually have sepsis. Hundreds of permeability experiments and endless hours in the lab later, I found that yes, these blood samples do induce vascular leakage in my model. But more importantly, we found a way to stop it. We found a small protein that acts as a key switch from a healthy vessel to an unhealthy leaky vessel. This protein, when activated, could actually block vascular leakage. I'm really excited as we found a way to block sepsis induced vascular leakage in the lab. I'm now focusing on moving my project into preclinical models to be able to develop specific therapy for sepsis. Our protein could also be targeted in other diseases that are affected by vascular leakage, such as atherosclerosis, diabetes, and even cancer. This is exciting for Hawaii as 10% of cancer patients die from sepsis each year, with native wines being particularly susceptible. So I hope with my contribution, we can go with the flow and stop sepsis. <laughs>